Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this. This is the third episode of Tantor's Journal. This is the story of what happened to Tantor between going through a portal and ending up on the other side, back with his friends. Just a quick reminder, this stream um, is sponsored by Dungeon Fog. It's an online cloud-based map-making tool. If you didn't already know, go over to dungeonfog.com slash man so you can get 10% off the annual membership if you decide to join. Definitely recommend going over there and signing up for a free account. Um, if you do decide to purchase, use the promo code man shorts for 10% off. It's a really cool tool, and it's we use it to build all the maps that we're using here um, and that we use on our other streams. So with that said, I'm going to hand things over to Ethan, who is going to continue on for us the uh, third episode of Tantor's Journal. What, what? All right, everyone. So, yeah, by now everyone knows that Tantor came back. He he was alive the whole time. Let's hope that Chaz doesn't die tonight and we keep the continuity going. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so Chaz, uh, as Tantor, you woke up uh, after a, uh, a very harrowing dream where you uh, fought some sort of rage beast demon thing. In the end, you feel like... While he uh, ran his blade through you, you also got about halfway through his neck. So you're not really sure what he calls it, but you feel like you won that match. But now you woke up and the the orb is uh, actually laying like in your hand, uh, and it is fully like glowing red and alive, like it was uh, when you first picked it up back inside the Titan. Uh, however, this time it doesn't feel like it's trying to take you over or anything like that. You you feel like you're still fully capable of your mental capacities other than that nothing really has changed in your surroundings there's still the full miasma of magic all around you and a lot of it's kind of emanating from that little trap door or uh, staircase uh down on south of you and you had mentioned last time that uh i feel that i would be able to uh, i feel reinvigorated to pursue my trip down said stairwell yeah, you feel like um, you are. Yeah, you you have the strength to be able to push your way through this time. All right. Well, then I'm going down there. Okay. So as you approach the just the still tidal wave of uh, energy that's coming out, you're stopped a little bit, like haltingly uh, take a step. But it doesn't feel like it's pushing you back anymore. It's more like you're just having to push and swim through like very thick water. Uh, but you're able to muscle your way through, and you get to the staircase, and you start heading down? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going down there. Okay. And you're heading down the spiral staircase. It seems like you you walk down uh, a couple flights worth of stairs. You're not really sure if that's just from the amount of force it's taking you to really move through it all, or if you actually are traveling like 20 feet down. Uh, but eventually, you come down the stairs into an open wo- uh, open room, and uh, there are not a lot of bodies around on the floor, but there are five bodies in varying places around the floor. Uh, and there's also in the center, you don't really see it on the map here, but in the center, there is a little altar uh, with a arcane design on it. Almost in like a circle, they're almost evenly spaced around are five bodies. They are all uh, human. But they look dressed in robes of different colors. Uh, one white, one black, one red, uh, one green, and one blue. Um, okay, can I tell how long they've been dead? Uh, so with the fact that the the robes are still there, but the bodies themselves, like, they're, they're bone now. You're really able to tell that they're human just from, like, their bone structure. Or at least human clothes. They could be elf. Um, something that, that bone structure-wise really resembles humans. So you could say they've been here a while. <laughs> they, they've been here quite a while, yeah. yeah. Uh, seeming like about the same time that all the rest of this um, like decay that's been happening that you've been running into in this building. I'd, I'd say about the same time. What else is in the room? Uh, else in the room, there are what look like, especially around the uh, spiral staircase that you came down in, uh, there is a lot of look like marks there. There. Uh, and right behind, like kind of flanking the spiral staircase, there are a lot of uh, magical scar marks, black marks. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the magic is actually focused like where you are, like around the staircase. Uh, as you move into the room, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of the battle marks there. Um, if you want, you can give me an, an investigation check. 
uh, to kind of pinpoint more uh, detail about all the the kind of kerfuffle that was going on around here. Uh, but for just a, f a first glance, you notice that a lot of the scarring marks are around the spiral staircase. What kind of check did you say? Uh, investigation. Oh, boy. Well, Tantor is not very smart. <laughs> yeah, so it. Um, other than that, this it looks like a wild puzzle to you. You can't really... Like, every time you try to uh, step and pinpoint the angles of fire to try to pinpoint and, like, try and get it back to where it originated... It seems like every time you do it, you you go to one lane, you think you got it, you go to another, and it, ha it ends up like, okay, you thought the first one was here, uh, the second one's selling you the pinpoints over here, you go back to the first point, now it's telling you it's over here, so you're all mixed up on, on where this origin of all this fire is coming from. You're not even sure if it was the only one person that did this uh, anymore. Okay, so is there anything else in the room? Give me another investigation check. Or, uh, yeah, give me another uh, we'll perception for this just to see more things. I can see now. Uh, so you peruse the room more. And uh, this room, it, it looks like there's there's a lot of, like, arcane weaponry. Uh, you can tell it's, like, arcane weaponry because the, I mean, the weapons are mostly daggers, stabs, things like that. Potion bottles and all. Uh, as you're going up to them, however, all of the magic in them looks inert uh it doesn't really look like they're kind of they haven't been focused in quite a while so everything is kind of dead uh as you're as you're looking at the bodies the five bodies um and you'll you'll go around we'll get to the red one last but as you're going around look at the bodies you notice that all of them have the same looking wound uh and it looks to be a uh a small wound uh in the back of the neck uh right at like the base of the skull it all looks like it was done by the same weapon. All the holes are kind of a, the same size uh, stab, and it's one just one really quick. There's not a whole lot of like wounds all over them, just that one at the base of the skull. So uh, one could assume from that um, that it was either some sort of a weird ritual or it was an execution. Or both. Yeah, that's true. So uh, as, as you get to... Uh, around to the red robe, your uh, orb starts glowing even hot uh, as you get around to the person with the red robe. Okay. Um, does the does the robe have any pockets on it? Uh, it does not have any pockets. No. Uh, it is just your regular wizard's robe. Now, when it's glowing, do I feel like that's a good thing or a bad thing? Like, how does the glowing feel? It's kind of like more active, almost. Like the like almost like the the orb is trying to to tell you something, give you some signal. Uh, as you as you've been wandering around the room, it's gone back to like its normal glowiness and kind of pulsing. But right around the the person, in the red robe, it's it's really acting up and, and getting brighter. Okay, well, uh, I want to take the robe, but I wouldn't imagine that it would fit me. No, it, it wouldn't fit you. No, I mean you could probably throw it on as like a, a half like overcoat. Uh, but it, it wouldn't really fit your form completely. Well, I mean, it seems like that's what the what the orb likes, so I'm going to put it in my bag. Okay, so you put it in your bag? Yeah. And uh, what do you want to do next? Um, well, I guess if there's not really anything else in this room, I'll go back upstairs because um, I haven't yet explored the rest of the castle. Uh, as you're walking towards the uh, staircase, the uh, orb stops glowing as much as it was as soon as you leave the uh, skeleton, like now the skeletal remains of what was wearing the red robe. Also, uh, since you're going around and actually really looking at the altar as well, you see that the altar itself has kind of some almost purposeful divots in the altar itself. Divots that were put there in construction or as a part of a destruction? Uh, so it looks like it, it was actually put in the construction of the altar itself and divots are on the top. So they, they look like they're kind of they're like slopey cutout uh, divots. Oh, like divots that would hold a ball. Yeah. Okay. And they're all empty. They're all empty. Yes. Okay. Well, I want to see, I'm going to put the orb in one of them. Okay. So you, um, you put the orb in, uh, in one of them, the orb glows brighter and give me one second. I gotta bring it back up. Man, Tantor might be one of my favorite characters ever. Not Verena. Yeah, Verena was a lot of fun, but Verena is like you know, 
Live fast, yes. die whenever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Tantor, I think, is uh, he's, he's I, I don't know. I like he's he's got a regality about him. Is that a word? It should be. My bad, man. I pulled I pulled Tantor uh, and I didn't pull the player thing. So you've been looking at the wrong map the entire time. I am oh. very sorry. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. Um, I just copied Tantor over and I've been talking. You're just like, well, I'm just looking at the same screen. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, no, that's fine. So, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, not as if not as if this like really illuminates me on anything that I didn't already kind of know, which is the, just just this ramshackled room with uh, bodies in it so yeah so when you put the altar up uh and he looks smaller than he did in your in your dream the demon that you fought in your dream appears uh, next to you as soon as you place the orb on the altar and he looks at you it's like oh i was waiting for you to summon me and who he kind of like you? stretches his arms and, what do you mean who am i i am dolmara we fought last night you are my new user he uh he looked down and uh, he, he looks down at the skeleton that had the had the robes over him, and he kind of kneels down a little bit, and it quickly draws like a some kind of icon. Uh, you, you're you're kind of looking over his shoulder, so you can't really make it out. And then he stands up and toward, turns towards you. Uh, he says, "That that was my first user, a man stabbed in the back. Then I was put in that thing." And he he he's looking towards the orb that's sitting on the altar now. What do you mean, user? My my user. They they need my aid every once in a while, and so they summon me to battle. Me and my brothers. We were stolen and put in these receptacles. And he kind of like he 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 looks very angry at the uh, at the orb itself. Uh, however, begrudgingly, I cannot destroy the orb. Neither can you without killing myself. Where are my brothers? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, who, who put you in there? A wizard. His name was Norbert Clunkerjack. If I ever see him again, I won't even need these blades. I'll just eat him myself. Uh, how long have you been in there? I'm not sure. The, the passage of time does not really, well, pass inside of it. But and he takes a look around. He says it seems like it's been quite a while. How many users have you had? Well, I guess you're the third now. The second one didn't really do a lot of talking. It was really easy to control, and he kind of just he's smiling, but not a whole lot of things to kill. And then you showed up, and you were so easy at first to take over. Funny now. Where? where uh, who are your brothers? What are you? Are you a demon? Demon, spirit, genie, angel, whatever you want to call me. We are not of this plane. We, well, we kind of get ripped here, make a pact. And, uh, yeah, he was the one that, uh, they ripped me here first. But apparently, apparently he was betrayed by one of his own. I'm not really sure what happened to the rest of my brothers. I, I know we, we came here in pursuit of Clunker Jack. And then, just black. And then the sea and the metal crunching. Uh, sorry, I'm being quite rude, not looking at you while you're speaking to me. <laughs> um, looking around. Quickly out of character. I think we've established this already, but I don't remember. Tantor knows not about any orbs. No, he, he knows so, nothing about any of it. When, when that was all kind of like set, it, he was, you know, Tantor was here. So, yeah, like, Tant Tantor knows nothing about it. Okay, but it also wouldn't take a genius to infer that, like, you know, if there's one demon in an orb, and he's apparently, the red guy was his, there's four other explained, unexplained bodies with no orbs. So I'm just going to say to him, uh, maybe your brothers were put in other orbs. Perhaps. I could feel them a little. It seems... A lot of them are together. One feels odd, though. Like half there. Empty. Well, he was always a little too bright for his britches. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he informs you he feels like the one that was his white brother. He feels like there's more than one of him, but not 
like one of like it, it feels we like he's he tells you kind of feels weird like like th there's one of him there but then some more also um okay. and then also the the one that is like some more also is with the black and blue brother and they are uh and he feels the green one like they're far away but they all seem to kind of be heading farther away and the green one is very very like a faint tether to him first of all does this robe have any significance to you does it do you do you care about this no that was just my masters it was you know it was robe clothes immortals and all your covering ups unneeded modesty he should have been worn more protection i told him that all the time but he never really wanted to listen he said it you know kept him from casting all his spells well let's see what that did for him how uh, are you sure that the only way to get you out of there is to kill you? Well, I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, there's someone there by him. Normally when the contract ends, when he dies or it's fulfilled, and uh, the fulfilling was killing Clunker Jack, and, well, I don't really see his body around. So normally if my user dies, I just can't go away. It sees my tether. I don't know what this Clunker Jack did, but apparently he found a way to tether us to something else. It's right annoying. Which, if it follows the normal contracting, means you got to kill that. If I do, I, 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 mean, I don't even know. I don't know if I'll go back. I don't know if I'll die. Well, it's kind of what exciting. If, what, <laughs> what if? What if we could find your brothers? Maybe we can see uh, if they find anything else. Also. Um. So, how does this work? Do you just ride around in that thing, and and I call you when I need you, or? Oh well, yes. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, you. You do know how to call me, right? You called me last night. Uh, That's when we fought. I guess by sleeping. Oh no, no! You just, just kind of gotta, you know, really focus, uh, focus in on the orb, and I'll, I'll be there. Okay. Well, um, so I'm gonna do my best to, uh, to set you free. Uh, uh, what was your name again? Dolmara. Dolmara, you're a hell of a fighter, and uh, it's a shame to see you trapped to this orb and, and not even on your own plane. Uh, we'll see about getting your brothers and getting you guys out of there. I think you, Tantor, you are also a, a mighty fighter. Maybe one day we'll have to fight again, and I can kill you properly. I can't wait. <laughs> um, I'm going to just take yeah. the orb off of the the thing. Okay, so he, he uh, disappears back into the orb. You, um, boop. Uh, so now you can add it to your, your character sheet. Uh, you just have a yeah. uh, the ability to... Once a day, you can summon Dolmara, and he's just like he's just a summon companion oh, to be like able to. Already, it looks like you already added it. Well, I have the maybe that was the Wrath of Dolmara thing. Um, I don't remember what that is. That was the thing that you used when you like nuked everyone. Oh, um, that which will still do that. You still have the power to do that. Uh, it will completely drain the orb uh, of its power until you recharge it, which you're not 100 percent sure yet how to do that. But is this the Rays of Wrath thing? Rays of Wrath is the 3d4 plus 5 radiant damage that you just fire out. Uh, right. The Wrath of Dolmar was the big pillar thing that nuked everyone. I mean, you can still do that. However, I will tell you, I won't DM caveat everyone surviving next time. Um, oh, no. So, yeah. Well, no, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, you just do like summon Dolmar. Uh, that would be hilarious if I just nuked the campaign. <laughs> It'd be very short next session. Uh <laughs> <laughs> What's I got to do to get turnover in here? And then just like stepped yeah. in. Oh, you want to step to me? <laughs> and then everybody's <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so God. is that all? Like uh, that's all I can do, right? Is the raise of wrath, or is there something else? So the raise of wrath or something that you could do yourself, like just a, a spell you have from the orb. Um, you also then can summon uh, Domara himself. Uh, so you can just write that in, and oh, if you you get that, you get yeah. that once a day. Once a day, you get that. And then he'll oh, fight alongside yeah. you. I'll add that to my equipment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, I guess right, I'm gonna so take a, I guess I'm gonna Lots. take another quick look, just glance around to see if there's anything else that might be of any importance before going back up to explore the rest of the castle. Okay. Um, so around the room that you see here, uh, do you want to give me uh, another investigation check? Yeah. Mm, man. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, you, you 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 find nothing else of import, uh, Sherlock, in this room. Well, okay. I what would that, I guess that would be a percent. Well, so you you don't find anything else of import on what happened here, like how they died, really, or anything like that. Um, but if you want to give me another, go ahead and give me another perception to search for stuff, though. So armed with the knowledge of the fact that you know that you got from Dolmara about you know it was one person that killed all of these people uh, in an obvious ritual. Um, it seems like the these five were attacking Norbert. Norbert Cl- uh, Clunkerjack seemed like his, they were all attacking him. His body's not here. His body's not here now. But it, it seems like they were all attacking him, and he subdued them and then killed them and and in some way uh that broke the tether and he somehow captured the those beings and put them inside the orbs armed with that knowledge you start looking around and more at the wounds themselves and you're not really sure what to make of it but it seems like there are like in the in the wounds themselves you're able to find like little shards of it's it's an almost like glass like uh, substance but it, it doesn't really you know, it's not glass because it has a bit more like color to it. It's not as transparent. It's almost like a milky white glass with uh, like with like black veins, like little black speckles in it. And there are bits in each of the wound uh, of of the five. And after you gather up all the pieces, uh, you have what seems to be a uh, a short, short blade. Uh, you, you're yeah, you're not really able to put it together yet, but you kind of line them up, and you're able to see a short blade. It's about that big, so a couple inches uh, long, and it seems like it has like a uh, it's like this opaque white glass that then has um, glass. <laughs> well, but like white, like think of it like that. But it's white, but then with like black like tendrils running through it uh, down the center of it. You don't seem to see like a handle or anything like that. Oh, so this is just the blade. There is no help. Just just the blade, yeah. Uh, but you're not really able to piece it together right now. You're just able to... You just have the pieces. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to put those into a little pouch and put on my person. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. So other than that, that's all you've really found here. Well, then I need to see what else is here and then... I don't know. Figure out my next game plan. I've got to try and figure out a way to get back to some form of civilization. So you head back up. Go ahead. Boop, boop. So you, uh, yeah, you had you head back up, and you basically just made like a, a straight B line for this room, yeah, and so you 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 thoroughly explored this room, uh, but not really anywhere else. All right. So I'm gonna come back down this hallway then, um, and see. What's down this way? Okay. Well, I guess, uh, right. yeah, that was really the only, well, I guess there was another door over here, but I'll just go down the hallway first. That's easy, m- closer. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're perusing down the hallway uh, and it goes, there looks to be like a, uh, at the far end of the hallway, there's actually an opening uh, in the wall down here that looks like the back wall was blasted in to this hallway here. Uh, and then you've got two, uh, what were like stone doors um, as you're, you know, about midway down the hall that look like they've been uh, crumbled away. I'm going to cautiously approach uh, the doorways and then just kind of peer in through either one to see what I can see. If I can at least see what kind of rooms they are. Okay. Give me a perception. Oh yeah. Okay. So you quickly peruse everything. Tonight. everything. Uh, you quickly peruse uh, both ends. And you're able to uh, see in the western room, this room here. It looks like there was a, there's just like a bunch of. Oh, you're you're first assaulted by just a smell of what looks like long decayed food and foodstuffs. Uh, so this to, looked to be some sort of. It was like a staging area, like a oh, like sorry. a dining room, Perfect. or yeah, but uh, yeah, like a like a dining room or like a prep um, room. The uh, dining room itself. So this looked like where a lot of like food was kept uh, and, and also eaten. Um, the okay. other room itself Gross. looks. Look at the other. Uh, <laughs> the other one itself looks like a makeshift staging room. Uh, there are tables that were lined up 
uh, some to provide barricade and some that were lined up uh, that looked like there are, um, you know, like paraphernalia. You still see the metal uh, working of what looked to be like compasses and things like that, like map making materials. And you see what looks to be, I mean, it's it's completely eroded away. But there is on the table here an actual like sheet of paper that looks big enough to have been a map and uh pieces like little uh stone pieces that are look to be like army represented they're little tokens of army members uh this itself was definitely a staging area oh okay so yeah this is war stuff tantor knows war stuff yep so um, you definitely recognize this from the uh can i gather from the plans so from the plans, it looks like there were um, there were two color like there were two colors of uh, stones. They're really faded, so it was really hard to make out. Some of them you're kind of getting a little confused on which color they were. But from the looks of it, it seems like there was uh, a large force that you uh, give me. Maybe what you you did war, so give me an investigation check with advantage because you, you you really know what you're you're looking at here and trying to look at. All right, so with a ten, uh, you're not a hundred percent sure, but it seems like there's little bits of map that hasn't completely faded out. You can't really see the surroundings of it, but from looking at it, it kind of looks like the surrounding terrain of where you're in now, and a large force of the army. Uh, pieces are around and surrounding uh the map or surrounding the the building on the map there's a couple of the pieces that are in the room that you're in now and then uh to like your the west where like the bedroom was and all like where the staircase and all that was there looks to be a smaller force of of a different uh, of, a, of a different color in that area uh it looks like the larger force that was surrounding the building uh, has had whatever the smaller force was outnumbered by about three times. So this is, so it doesn't appear that this was, well, I guess it could have been a conquering um, in the sense of, I mean, do, do, uh, how do I know, like have any kind of inkling when this would have happened? Like 10 years ago, 500 years ago. Uh, they, so from the fact of the, the Atlas that you found, and the fact that this map also, uh, it doesn't really seem like there's any kind of markings to do like elevation or any like they do. You're looking at this um, like their their arrangement of armies and you're wondering where the airship models are um, to do airstrikes. So what's your, let me see, let me bring up your character sheet and see what your uh, intelligence and all that stuff is. <laughs> not good. Tantor's not smart. Yeah. Um, Oh, uh, you're, you're perceptive, though. Wisdom wisdom is pretty good. This seems to be like this took place on flat ground. And I'm not talking about, like, you're, you're looking around, you're trying to pe pe uh, piece the bits together, and not, like, flat ground, like, oh, this took place on, like, one of the floating islands or something like that. Like, there, there has been, since you've been out here, there's been no inkling at all of any kind of airship strategies. There's been no markings of an airship bombing or anything like that. So you're thinking that this may have predated somehow airships being invented, or maybe there was uh, no need for airships whenever this happened. Uh, but in your memory and all of recorded history, there's been no mention of what this war was, a, a clunker jack uh, wizard, and there's been no mention of a time wherever there was before airships. So this is seeming like before recorded history. And you mentioned that um, in the original atlas that I that I still have that I was looking at that while it didn't look anything like the known universe to my knowledge, it had all of the same names of things. A lot of you recognize a lot of the, the um, like continent names, like where this where they were separated by borders. You recognize a lot of them, but they were like right next to other um, borders. The only name that you didn't see there that you expected to see but didn't recognize at all uh so there was some there that you didn't recognize and there was one that you would assume you would have seen uh but it wasn't on there and that was arcadia arcadia was listed nowhere on that map and that's a big deal i mean tantor is aware that arcadia is like 
Los Angeles and yeah, uh, it's it's where like everyone wants to be. Yeah, it's the tip top of the world. All right. Well, anything else in the room? Um, yeah, give me another. Um, well, so uh, in the like as you're you look up from the uh, from the maps and your musings there, you see in the back corner over here what looks to be a uh, a body. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll go. Over uh, and it looks check it that looks out. to be a, a com- yeah a couple uh, crumpled up. Yeah, so go ahead and give me a perception check on uh, on the bodies. Oh yeah, bro. Okay, so this uh, is is a group of bodies that looks to be another. Um, there are specifically four of them, and they all look to be like you're you're rummaging around in the like basically their garments because uh, again they're all kind of rotted away skeletons. These, and they're, you're, they're humans as well. Yes, uh, and you're seeing uh, more insignia of four of those five factions, or four of the six factions that you saw out in the fields, where all of the um, like all the moss monsters were. Uh, but there's only four of them, and in one of the pockets, you find a journal. Uh, okay, so let me just try and remember. So we, when I got here originally. I was able to discern that there were a total of six different, like, I, I guess you would call them like company flags. Yeah. Yeah. One of them you recognized as, um, clunker Jack. Um, so they're basically like coats of arms. Yeah. I saw. Um, and you, well, you, don't, you didn't recognize, all right, so yeah, cause there's, there's no like written history of, of clunker Jack, but you don't, you don't recognize them as clunker Jacks. You recognize them as, like one of them is like one of the oldest factions um, that existed in uh, in Nuwata. Like they were a- like an ancient coat of arms, um, and that one and one other are missing from this group of, of four. Um. Okay. So, uh, what's in the journal? I want to read the journal, or can I read the journal? Yeah. So you crack up the journal, and uh, and you you crack up the you know, to the light, the latest uh, entry. And it's, it's kind of a hurry. Uh, you can tell by like the scribbling. It's, it's really hurried writing. Not it, you get kind of get the sense of that. It's not like rushed of like, Oh, well, like, I got to get this down. Cause I'm rushed. It's more of like an excited writing. Uh, you can get that also a little bit of just the words that are being used. And through reading it, you basically get the, um, the gist of it that uh, this person that you took the journal from was a uh, high ranking member of the um, faction of Salzar, and uh, they were working with uh, other factions. And uh, on the way, they were coming here to basically hunt down uh, again that name that you're you're hearing uh, again, uh, Clunkerjack. They're saying that he has he's trying to do this crazy ritual, saying that he'll you know bring a new world and and rid everyone from this squabbling over territory by separating the territories. However, one of the, the factions were coming with them to try to uh, do this last little push to taking out Clunkerjack. The uh, faction of Valifor did not make it. Uh, they did not make it all the way uh, to this I'm being fed ice cream. It's avocado ice cream. It's vegan. Avocado ice cream. Avocado. That might be the most hip, hipster thing I've heard all week. How is it, DM? <laughs> it's mint chocolate chip. Oh. It's really good. It's like that is not avocado. It's not like, <laughs> I guess it's like avocado based. Yeah, everything in there is avocado. But it's like <laughs> mint, mint and chocolate. Yeah, it's not like such overpowering mint. Like, I could eat this whole tub and not be like, I'm so sick of mint. And I get that with mint chocolate chip. That's great. All right. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> there's your commercial. <laughs> no, y'all, actual... y'all are good. <laughs> so, so Valifor didn't make it to this mm. event? Yeah. So, the well, uh, so what you're getting from it, the Valifor, the faction made it to this event. They didn't make it to this building. 
so whatever the forces they made that were one of the the six that you found out there valifor didn't make it they didn't make it all the way here but the the journal goes on to like and this is where kind of the excitement's coming from they say that they have surrounded the building and pinned him down and the leaders of the five factions have gone uh to um like gone to hunt down uh Clunkerjack, and that he has been pinned, uh, and and they sent off their their leaders, who are their uh, strongest warriors, to go and, and take him down. Okay, and that that was the last entry. All right. Uh, well, I'll keep that. I'll put that journal in my bag. Um, I think that's kind of kind of heavy this is you know tantor is not um he's not a thinker he's been (laughs) having to he's been having to think a lot these last few days so um i kind of want to just move along to try and find some semblance of civilization actually um well i can only do it once a day um but he'll but he'll come out if i go put him down on that altar yeah yeah, he'll come out. Uh, some, something with the altar is, you know, it's you assume like where all this kind of started. So something with the altar is um, is bringing him out. OK, um, I want to take him back down to the altar and uh, ask him a few more things before I go anywhere. OK, boop, boop. Let me grab you. So you're heading back down the stairs. Do, 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 do. Head nice back. that you only have to bring one person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like eight people between three maps. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Uh, you're you're back down. Okay, yeah. So I just want to take him uh, back up and set him on the altar. All right, he boop pops back. Uh, yes. Hey, uh, so I I found out some more stuff uh, while I was uh, here. Um, so you don't know what happened here, right? No, no. Uh, the, the last I heard, we were coming to to attack Clunker Jack, and I don't, I don't recognize this room really at all. I don't think we made it here. Well, I didn't make it here. I don't know where I was. So that was your original master and those others, your brother's masters? Yes, yeah, uh, the... My my old master was uh, Sir Valifor. Really? Yes. Okay. Um. He um he he kind of like as you're you're thinking, uh, his head snaps up a little bit, and he says, "I sense enemies above us." What kind of enemies? Ones that are gonna die. Uh, yeah, but how do you expect we to get there? I don't even know where we are. I don't have a ship. I don't know where any of my party is. No, 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 not, not, not far above us. Right above us. And uh, give me a perception check. Oh, boy. Whew, keeping it clean with those 17s. With, with the 17, you're able to hear, and it sounds like loud, um, really, really loud, uh, scraping on the floor. And it's a sound that you remember and recognize. It's a Oh, it's another one of those things. What things? These things that I fought outside before I got into this place. You you might want to get ready. And I'm just going to kind of Does it I mean does it sound like it's approaching? It sounds like it's like right above y'all, yeah. Okay, well I'm just going to kind of wait and keep my eye on the staircase. So uh, you see coming down the staircase um, and it's like a little like almost like a little arm ver- uh, of the of the vines comes through and then it kind of just all all at once kind of slithers out um, and you actually have to take a couple steps back oh. uh, as it's coming through. So uh, I got to move you out too. Hold on. Switching layers, layers, layers. All right, so we'll go like there. All right. And... Oh, my God. 
and the largest mound you have ever seen. Feed me, Seymour. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh man. And uh, I'll, I'll I'll roll everything for Domara. Oh, I didn't click on Tantor first. My bad. Cool. I I can. I'm well versed in doing this. So, do I know, by the way, like what he actually is? Like, I was, you're, you're, I've probably never seen anything like him. What Dalmora or the the mound is? No, um, Dalmora. No, no, you, you've never seen anything like him before. Uh, he is some sort of extra planar creature. That's really all you've got uh, gathered uh, from his looks, like, like celestial. Yeah. Well, he doesn't seem evil to me. <laughs> And then just okay, so you'll go up first, and then Dolmara will go. Okay, um, so I'm going to uh, attack with my trident. Then I'm gonna step up yep. and back, you foul beast. Oh well, first I'm gonna cast the um, the hunter's mark. On yep. It. Um, and then heart stopper. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this is faring better than last time. Oh, and that's a crit nice yeah that that first one was a crit yeah so so what is this this is so that's yeah so, so, so that's, that's gonna be seven plus five is 12 12 plus um then your um hunter's mark damage oh yeah oh of course so 13 and then this damage Plus five, so seven, so twenty. Plus a d six, plus a d eight. Yep. Twenty six. Twenty six total. Yeah. All right. So twenty six total. So you, you know, looking to now show your your real skills. Now you you've really gotten the weight of your trident in your left hand again, uh, and and gotten used to it. But as this thing really just slithers its arm out. You, uh, while Delmar takes a step back, you actually jump up and start running up the vine arm. And as it clears its way in, you jump and you stab straight for where you think that, where you remember like the core kind of area is. And your trident slices through. Uh, you don't feel it hit anything solid on the inside though. Uh, and then you, you land right in front of it. Okay, cool. Um, so then I'm done. Delmar will, will, uh, laugh and, and say, I need trick. And then he is going to charge towards it and uh, swipe at a truck twice as well. Okay, so both of those will hit, and he does. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus. Um. So, yeah. I like so each the of his of that. <laughs> each of his blades does two d eight plus six slashing damage. Uh, and he rolled a uh, for, and then so with those both decks, he'll roll forty eight. He did a six, a six, a six, and eight. Damn. He runs forward and. Uh, throws both of his blades at it and he's aiming for that same spot that you did and he uh, slices clean like huge gashes in it and the uh, both the blades kind of spin around and he catches them in midair as he's still running uh, up towards it uh, but you still didn't see even an inkling of like the glowing center uh, that it had and then its turn is up and it's going to bring a, a, a slam on each of y'all okay 14 that'll hit and that'll hit Domara also. So Tanto, you'll take uh, 14 points of bludgeoning damage as uh, like that vine you ran up uh, now just like brings back and swipes across you and slams into you. Oh, Domara will take four, uh, 20 points of bludgeoning damage. And then you're up. All right. Doing it again. Okay, both of those will hit. Smash. I guess that's 11 plus your hunter's mark plus your colossus so that's 16 on the first one okay and then seven nine Whew, all right 16 yeah. on the second one there we go get the little holes out of there yeah. All right. yeah, 32, son. All right, so y- y'all are just hammering the gap right now on this, on the, the center of this. Y'all are working really well as a team. As soon as he, uh, both y'all got slammed, uh, you both kind of rolled with it. You see him roll with his uh, his slam as well. And y'all now coming kind of on the outside of it. And you uh, kind of run up the side of it and stab your trident in twice. 
and cut a nice long series of gashes uh, from right to left. Uh, Domara is going to mirror you on the outside. So you'll both kind of roll with it on the outside of the slams with it. And they're both running up the side of it. And then he's going to throw both of his uh, blades uh, across as well. Uh, both of those will hit. Ooh, not as good this time. Only 24 damage. Uh, so he throws both of his blades forward. And so like your uh, trident comes in the center and his blades come like top and bottom of, of, um, of where your trident slashes. But since he threw it in such close proximity, the blades actually really come close to hitting you. Uh, but it seems like it's coming right at you, but then kind of diverts at the last second away from your head and spins back towards him. And as he catches him, you you think you 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 caught like a wry smile as he's looking at you, almost as if he did that on purpose to you. Watch it. Uh, he just kind of gives you a smile. Um, the creature now is going to turn uh, towards you, and he's going to try to slam you with both. Oof, and those both will hit. Bring it on, shrub man. Okay, so both slams hit into you, and you'll take uh, 39 points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Uh, and then he's going wrap you, he's gonna wrap, uh, wrap you up in, in the vines. So go ahead and give me a strength check to try to rip out. Oh. Uh, you no. actually get even more uh, like into it. Like he's now crushed, like starting to crush your body. Yeah, that was a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's he's going to. Oh, yeah, that's why he doesn't have any like damaging spell things. Uh, he's he's going to uh, come to where like where you are, and he's gonna uh, touch the creature. He, like he speaks something, but you can't really make it out. It, it's in another language uh, to the creature, and around where uh, he's he, it's grabbing you, all of that kind of turns like black. Um, and then its turn is up. It needs. Oh, yeah, no, it's not ever going to save that, but... Okay, it's going to try to constrict you. Okay. I won't allow it. Uh, so you'll take seven points of uh, bludgeoning damage as it constricts uh, as it constricts you. Alrighty. And then go ahead, and now your turn's up. Go ahead and give me a, a strength check. To break out. Okay, it has disadvantage on that so fine okay so you uh so you break out uh of of that oh my god and it, in yeah. spite of how weak i am <laughs> yeah you you break out of the the constriction okay so i can just attack as normal yeah yeah you can go ahead and attack Whew. okay so the first one will hit but not the second seven eleven fifteen not bad. 15 total? Okay. All right. Then uh, he's up, and he uh, he looks at you, and he says, you're welcome. And uh, and then he's going to throw both the blades at it. Oh, that one crits. So, good lord, <laughs> yeah. what are you going to use that? Yeah. Um, okay, so he, uh, after, so you walk, he throws his blade straight into, like, the gap that y'all have been uh, pounding away at. Uh, and then as they, uh, they puncture through the back, and spin back towards them, and then now you see an opening right into the the center core uh, of this thing, where it's like that glowing red conglomeration of of stuff. Oh yeah, uh, it is going to uh, to roar and try to hit each of y'all one more time. Uh, so he he gets Domara, but he misses you. You're able to dodge it. Uh, Domara takes 19 points of bludgeoning damage, and then you're up, Tantor. Uh, all right, I'm going to end this thing. Um... Okay, so one of those hits, the second one. Okay. Um, so that's three plus five is eight. Plus four is 12. <sighs> plus one is 13. Uh, you have such good pattern recognition. Uh, remember, this is seeming like some, some sort of their, their power core and so you have uh, Dolmar kind of boost you up a little bit uh, and kind of throw you into the gap. As you're going through, you just stick your uh, your trident out straight through. Uh, you blast right through it and tuck and roll. And uh, your back slams into the back wall uh, a little bit. But when you look, the like stone heart of this thing is just sitting at the end of your trident. And all the shambling mound itself collapses down. 
and then you um you see like that uh like some of that energy that uh like that red glowing energy that's in the rock kind of leaves and dissipates and then flows uh flows actually into you uh and like into the the orb that you have and you feel very energized and dolmara looks at you and he says i can feel my brothers it seems like they're all together and he walks up to you uh with with uh, a hand outstretched and says will we go to them uh yeah and i'm gonna grab his hand all right and then that's where we'll end oh yeah awesome oh man so is that where is that is that the end of the journal that's the end of the journal yeah so that is where um, where we conclude tantor's journal so uh thank you all for joining us for this little escapade uh that has served as your entertainment during this our short break before we start our next campaign um which i guess i should talk about because we'll probably already be talking about it at that point Uh, (laughs) i hope so (laughs) yeah but it's going to (laughs) be our star wars campaign um and that's going to be starting on uh, october the 27th um tentatively um i uh, I thought october october the 27th i thought was the gestalt yeah oh no no, 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 that's the 24th 24th um the 27th 27th. will be the tuesday uh where we're going to start doing our star wars campaign we're going to swap to tuesdays um and i don't know other than that thanks for joining us for this um just another quick reminder um this was this video sponsored by dungeon fog go to dungeonfog.com create a free account check out all the cool stuff they add new stuff all of the time it's a really great way to make good maps quick and easily um, and if you decide to become a member you can use the code man shorts for 10 percent off the annual membership uh, thank you ethan for uh doing this this was awesome i do want to get together something for uh the varina stuff which i went through our facebook conversations and see that we have a lot of Oh, I we think, actually do. Oh, oh I didn't yeah, think we yeah. had a whole lot, but I think yeah. I think we played. A, I think we played a session in person. I think we may have played one in person. Yeah, but yeah, we I, played I one in person, and then we did the rest on Facebook. So we can piece yeah. together. I think that first session, and then uh, figure out a way to format it so that we can get that out as well, so people can know what happened with Verena when she was away <laughs> and the we play. Yeah. Uh, all this time later. Man, see, um, now, like, the problem with this is, is now, like, I won't be able to kill any of any of y'all off in, like, the Star Wars campaign or anything like that, because everyone's going to be like, oh, they're coming back. I'm going to have to be like, no, you see the body. <laughs> like, yeah, but I dead. feel like it's, 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 it's almost more of a me trope than a you trope at this point. I feel like if it was anybody <laughs> else, people would be like, oh, man, is, that person's really dead. Well, you, you always just run up and, like, start touching ancient artifacts. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really bad about that. What my favorite story like that was when I was playing Rufio Rosie the Harpoon Hadozi, and uh, and don't at me about Hadozi. I say Hadozi. That's how I first read it. That's how I'll always say it. But in three five, the uh, Rufio Rosie the Harpoon Hadozi, we were we were in this room, and there was like this there was this arcane circle in the middle of it, like clearly. <laughs> like a spooky, <laughs> ominous, arcane circle. And like the moment we got in the room, I ran into the middle of it and summoned a water elemental. <laughs> just messing with shit, man. Like almost instantly. That's just how I play D&D. That's why I'm always like, well, I don't know. I guess I do like the fighters, but it's super fun to bard. And I don't yeah. know what I'm going to do with Star Wars. Are we? So we're, are we doing no force users or... I mean, we need to get a consensus on that. Like, we first said no force users, and then people were like, "Oh, wait, what? what? You need? We're not doing force." I'm like, y'all said you'd want to, so I don't know. Y'all got to tell me. I'll figure out something. How much? You know, you know how much I love Star Wars. I'll, I can pull a Star Wars campaign out of my ass in like two days. Yeah, we'll figure so. it out. We'll keep everybody up to date on that uh, on social media and stuff. But thanks for joining us for Tantor's Journal, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.